Hey everyone, Chairman here. I'll be on Hololive duty this time around since I've had the opportunity to test this set extensively in the Japanese meta. Hololive is a deep and diverse set with many different options and strategies, but over time, two major decks have seen more success than the rest. Today we'll be taking a look at one of them, the Ruxia deck. This level 3 Ruxia from the Generation 3 trial deck is one of the most competent endgame combos in White Stars to date, and gives players access to a competitive build right out of the TD. Let's get right into it. First things first, this deck contains a total of 4 double wear cards. 4! This deck is insanely budget friendly with the majority of the cards coming out of the trial decks. So if you were hesitant to jump into the set because of the price, absolutely not an issue. Honestly, we could have built the deck with no double wears at all, except I think Pekora level 1 combo is one of the better choices for the deck. Speaking of which, level 1 combos. There are a wide number of options that work well with the Rusha combo, but there are generally two things that we really want in our level 1 combo. Number 1, a good color, either blue or yellow. And number 2, the ability to grab the pieces we need for our combo at level 2, which include 1 Noel Brainstorm, 1 Flare Support, 1 level 3 Rusha, and the Climax. Because of this, I'm not the biggest fan of running the level 1 Flare combo in the trial deck. Even though she has great innate synergy with the rest of the package, because the combo has difficulty getting the necessary pieces into your hand. Better options would include Korone or Watame level 1 combos, which can easily search or salvage the pieces we need, but they don't help us get the climax and, more importantly, help us loop the climax once we get our Rusha board set up. For that reason, a blue level 1 combo with a pants trigger would be ideal for getting both the characters and climaxes needed for the combo. Between Boltan and Pekora, which are our selective level 1 blue combo options, Boltan requires additional setup and stock investment in getting cards into memory. Pekora manages to do most, if not everything we want. She mills, can choose from a decent selection of cards, and comes with a pants climax. However, any of the combos I've mentioned in this section are viable and have their own advantages and disadvantages. Feel free to use whichever one works best for you. Let's go over the cards in the Rusha package, all from the Generation 3 trial deck. The Noel Brainstorm is a tap self, mill 5 draw brainstorm, and the brainstorm of choice because it also gives our Rusha's plus 1000 power. Some decks opt to run additional brainstorms that have more utility and better selectivity, but I don't think they are worth the slots on the field, especially since you will most likely have to play over them at level 2. Milling 5 cards instead of 4 is a significant upgrade, and you can occasionally draw into climaxes, which can be a big swing in your favor. The Noel also gives the level 1 flare combo 1000 power if you choose to run her instead. The flare back row support has the level support effect, and once you are level 2, she gains the ability to pay 2, tap herself with the Noel brainstorm, and summon the Rusha from your hand. Because the ability to summon the Rusha out is on the flare support, this means that Rusha herself doesn't have any penalty or demerit that's commonly found on other early play cards. Rusha on the board gains 1500 power and hand encore if there are two or more other Hall Life characters, which is always the case at level 2 since you need both back row cards to summon her. Hand encore makes her incredibly sticky and hard to remove through normal combat. Your opponent would need to send her to stock, clock, or deck to completely remove her. Her climax combo effect gives you the ability to target a Hololive character in your waiting room and either return it to hand or summon it on the board. If you return a character to hand, you can additionally shuffle 4 cards from your opponent's waiting room back into their deck. And if you summon a character, that character gets 2500 power cross turn. Both options give you a plus 1 in card advantage, but the shuffle back option is more offensive, while the summon can not only get you a character, but also bypass the stock cost for that character as well. Shuffling back clean cards into deck is deceptively powerful and can be guaranteed damage if your opponent is careless enough to end their turn with only a few cards in deck. So just the threat of the Rusha shuffle back is enough to force opponents to spend resources to play around it or lose to it. For units to summon, an ideal target is a level 3 modding from the trial deck, which can heal when played from hand or summoned out from the Rusha's ability. She also has an on attack ability that allows you to assign one soul to up to three characters, a great way to push for extra damage or create favorable side attacks in the late game. Setting up the Risha combo is crucial to the success of this deck, so the level 0 and level 1 game needs to be consistent 
and strong and consistently strong for the deck to succeed. Luckily, we have level 0 Aqua. This card does everything. Controls the board, clocks you to level 1, gets you cards, fixes color, cleans your room, makes you dinner in a bath. Alongside Aqua, we max out on the Miko Drop Search from the TD, who is also 3500 power. The two cards side by side can box out any 3500 center runner and force our opponent on the back foot as early as turn 1. The drop search also helps supplement our level 1 combo in grabbing pieces that we miss. To further boost our consistency, we're also running one copy of the Choco Drop Salvage for additional hand fix and milling. Now, here comes the fun part. Level 0 Xion from the Trial Deck is a powerful card in the strategy, both at level 0 and level 2. At level 0, she can help redirect attacks away from herself or towards herself depending on the situation at hand. Opponent trying to use a clean cut on your Xion? Go talk to Aqua over there. Opponent trying to use a bottom deck bomb on the Aqua? Not on Xion's watch. By forcing unfavorable attacks for our opponent, we can have a much easier time retaining our advantage and setting up our level 1 combo. But that's not all. Her real use comes online at level 2, where she can be used alongside our Ruxia combo to redirect anti-early play bombs away from Ruxia and keep her on the board. It's not an exaggeration to say that this Xion is the MVP of the deck, providing key support at important points of the deck's game plan. Rounding out our level 0 game, we have the 3500 anti-runner Korone from the TD. She's mostly here for color, and 3500 beaters at level 0 aren't bad. But she does have an interesting use case if our opponent ever decides to use a shrink effect like Ayame on our Rushias. We can summon Korone out and lock our opponent's board if they've carelessly misplaced units during the main phase. If you don't want to run the Korone, you can choose to run Coco Klinka in this slot, as another good level 0 yellow card. Lastly is one copy of the Climax Swap. Even though we're playing 8 Pants Triggers, we always want to get the Rusha Climax in the latter half of the game. Any of the Climax Swap cards are good, a Watame just happens to be yellow and occasionally gets us an extra stock. Level 0 is the meat of the deck. The rest of the deck is fairly straightforward. 4 copies of Subaru at level 1 helps us filter out unneeded cards and extra climaxes while milling through our deck. Do note that while she can grab the Rusia and the Flare support, she is unable to grab our Noah Brainstorm as it is a level 0, so you'll need to get the Brainstorm some other way. She also can grab any of our counters, each useful in their own situation. The 1 1 Mel counter is a great way to filter out a single climax in the hand as well as contest board as early as level 1 if you aren't going to hit level 2 right away. The 2-1 Suisei counter is excellent in the mirror and against other early play focused decks. Finally, the 2-1 Hachama Beam counter is the ultimate defensive tool in the deck, easily recyclable with the Rusha combo and capable of denying stock, denying damage, and protecting multiple lanes all at once. It's important to note that the counter has to discard Hololive characters, which means you can't salvage a Climax with the Pants Trigger to discard. To round out the deck, we have a few tech options at level 3. The early play Watame serves as another answer to early play decks and sticky boards. I generally favor the hard removal over something like Ayame, which hits more targets but gives the opponent a chance to encore. You could run either, both, or neither in this deck. There's enough red for the Ayame if you want to go that route. Finally, the stock swap Matsuri is just a great card to have and pairs nicely with the shuffle back effect of Rusha. You can force your opponent to get rid of their clean stock and then shuffle those cards back for a powerful decompression combo. Other choices you can consider include early play healers like Suisei or good cards to summon out with Rusha's effect like the trial deck Fubuki, the 3-2 Luna, or the 3-2 Aki. Let's run through an overview of what this deck wants to accomplish at every level. For our opening hand, we want to keep most of our level 0s and any Pekora combos. I'll also discard any Noel Brainstorms after the first one, and if I don't have Aqua, I'll discard the Watame and Choco as well just for a chance at the Goddess. Level 0 is all about setting up beefy 3500 attackers and getting as much board control and resources as possible. We want to see an Aqua in rotation every game 
So if I don't open one, I generally use a Miko drop search to grab one on my second turn. It's important to pair Aqua with another front row attacker to counter cards like the Rudy PR or Neon Cat. And the level 0 Xion provides additional protection against cards like Sayo Bomb or Alilia back row. We want to generate as much stock as we comfortably can to give us leeway to use stock later in setting up our Rusha board, so don't be afraid to play 3 attackers to get as much stock as possible. Level 1 is all about getting through our first deck. With a combination of Pekoro combo and Subaru, we can control our refresh timing well and give ourselves a decent chance of cancelling at level 2. Depending on the matchup, I'll either stack all the plus 1000 power on one Pekora or spread them out across the board. But either way, the power isn't too relevant since you'll be setting up a completely new board at level 2. Don't waste unnecessary resources at this stage of the game, we need all of it for level 2. So no brainstorming randomly or anything like that. Our ideal level 2 board is exactly level 3 Rusha, level 0 Xion, with flare support and Noel brainstorm in the back. And remember, you can't use the Noel Brainstorm if you want to summon Rusha. On the first Rusha combo, you want to summon out another Rusha and keep both of them on the board. Once you've stabilized with two Rushas, you can consider either summoning out a third, summoning out modding to heal, or salvaging counters and shuffling back cards into your opponent's deck. What you choose is largely dependent on the matchup and the game state, but here are some things to keep in mind. Modding's on attack ability to pay one stock and discard a card is an excellent way to pay out triggered climaxes, so she's often the best target when your deck is either compressed or small. You can also use her soul pump to enable beneficial side attacks in case you're worried about things like anti-change or rest counters. If you don't summon out a modding, it's always a good idea to have a mel counter in hand in case you need to filter climaxes from your hand. Don't forget that you can either summon out a Coronet Anti-Runner or a level 0 Xion to beat specific matchups. But at the end of the day, nothing's better than just another Rusha on the board. Rusha is a powerful deck that can snowball a lead easily from level 2 to a win, with Rusha being both a resource engine and a finisher in the same card. The deck also boasts a strong and consistent level 0 game that is difficult for most decks to deal with. However, the deck struggles if opponents can attack and remove Rusha with anti-change counters, anti-early play bombs, and board removal effects like the early play Shirogane or Rudy plus Lilia combo. Because of this, it's important to use all the tools at your disposal, especially the Xion level 0, to prevent your opponent from answering your Rushas. Besides that, the deck also lacks a few key control tools like a refresh counter, that would make it a lot harder for the deck to get into a bad situation in the late game. All in all, the Rusha deck is one of the premier decks to come out of the Hall Life set, and is notably low rarity and budget friendly. It's a great deck for anybody looking to get into the game, and has a lot of customizability at level 1 and 3, so you can play with your favorite cards and combos. That's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to tap the like and subscribe button if you want to see more content like this in the future. We have a lot of Hall Live videos upcoming, from deck profiles to gameplay videos and more. So stick around and stay tuned. See you next time!